Shalom Akiyam, this is your brother Karoth. I'm coming at you again with another lesson. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. And enough respect to the brothers that's laboring to be in the spirit that Lord Yahweh Shai came in, um, enduring afflictions, constantly uh, uh, putting up lessons to feed the sheep. I'm going to title this one, I Have Set Before the a straight path con so if you uh if you go to deuteronomy head over to deuteronomy with me it's deuteronomy 30 this is an in transit too so bear with me akim aqua so it's deuteronomy 30 in verse 19 it says i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You know, so Most High has put a, um, he's put, uh, he's set before us a straight path. He wants us to choose uh, uh, the life. He wants us to choose life because it says I have, I have, uh, I, uh, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. So you can either choose life or you can choose death. This is blessing and curse, therefore choosing life. This is therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So, so that's part of him laying that straight path before us or setting that straight path, setting us on that straight path. But if we choose to veer, turn to the left or to the right, then we know that that's certain death. And we go here, this is Matthew. A lot of people like to go into geopolitics. You can go into geopolitics all you want, but if you don't know what it, what a company salvation, if you don't know what type of mindset or what type of spirit you're supposed to be in, you can know geopolitics all you want, but you'll still uh, um, experience death by pain if you're not in in the proper spirit and, and moving the proper way. Um, that's just a little side note. This is um this is Matthew seven. Matthew seven and thirteen. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way uh, that leadeth to destruction, and many there will be which go in there at. Yeah, so there's many that go in at uh, the wide gate to destruction, you know. You know, there's many people that go in at that way, you know, so there's a narrow path that we, we must take, and that narrow path is not very popular. And also... States in Romans uh, 8 and verse 6. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So to be spiritually minded is life. That's that straight path that leads to life. To be spiritually minded. You know, and to be carnally minded is death. So when he's saying choose, choose, uh, choose life he's he's telling you to choose love choose joy choose peace choose long suffering choose gentleness choose goodness choose uprightness uh choose uprightness of heart and, and uh, uprightness of life choose faith choose meekness choose temperance choose bowels of commer of uh, mercies kindness humbleness of mind charity and forgiveness and there's a lot of people that's in the faith they've been in the faith for a long time but they still can't embody these and they still don't know how to operate and uh, according to these, um, it says, uh, it says, choose death. Um, so here it says, um, it says to be carl carnally minded is death. So, so if you if you're carnally minded, then that means that you're um, you're not going um, in that straight path that 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 uh, that the Most High has set before thee. You're not choosing that straight path. You're choosing death because you're choosing carnality. To be carnally minded is death. That means that you're you're choosing that um, um, to go down that that path. And carnally minded is adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, to be stubborn, um, which is idolatry, to be to, uh, to be rebellious, to be a murderer, which is a hater of your brethren, uh, variance and emulations, wrath passion uh you know that wrath is a passion for uh for, for, for violence strife seditions heresies 
uh, envyings, murders, um, you know, and we know the murder, once again, is hating your brother. <clears throat> if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Drunkenness, uh, intemperance, revelings, and the like, you know, so we definitely don't want to operate according to uh, being um, carnally minded or choosing death. This is Romans 7 and 21. Romans 7 and 21, it says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Yeah, so when you do good, when you would want to do good, evil is present. Um, evil is present, you know. So, so within us, um, within us is both bad, you know, when I say bad, I'm saying concupiscence. And when you go into that word concupiscence, it's a strong desire uh, to, to do something improper. You know, or 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 it's an illicit desire. You know, lustful feeling. You know, you coveting. You're longing for what is for, what is forbidden. You know, and many jakes they do that, man. They long for what's forbidden. You know, you can't have a longing for what's forbidden. You know, that's not that's not a that's not it. You can't have concupiscence. You know, that longing for what is forbidden. You know, and. and that longing for what is forbidden, you know, usually it's laid out, you know, in according to the, what's in the law. And also, you know, um, you know, you have to you have to kind of hold yourself to a high standard as well. You know, you know, something something, uh, you know, like we always point out something that may be, quote unquote, lawful. But if it makes somebody else stumble, then you got to reconsider even that. <clears throat> or, but uh, back to this point, concupiscence. You know, a strong desire, for, uh, improper, or illicit desire, um, uh, longing for what is forbidden, you know, depravity, you know, perverseness. So within us is are these are these things, man, these things are inside of us, you know, that longing for what is forbidden, that depravity, that perverseness, that transient morality. <coughs> Excuse me. And what do I mean when I say transient morality? Uh, morality It's morality that's here. Uh, uh, here, uh, here, uh, one one minute and gone the next. You know that's called transient morality, and that's in us, man. One minute we're doing the right thing, we're on the we're on the path to doing the right thing, and then, you know, and then lo and behold, we start to go go the hell off and do things that ain't that we don't want to do, like uh, like Apostle Paul pointed out. Um, so we get those. So you know we we have these things in us man like you know uh Romans 7:21 I find the law that when I would do good evil is present with me so yeah you know evil is present with me man um so let me make the point though I'm I'm kind of rambling so within us is both concupiscence and I already told you what concupiscence is um depravity perverseness transient uh morality you know the the the, the ability to be unprofitable man <clears throat> and weakness and also within us is uh is uh good you know we have a conscience we can we can possess purity of heart we can possess uh moral goodness we can possess noble uh like noble traits we can be honorable um you know we can be genuine extremely genuine <coughs> we can be uh honest we can have honesty in us. We can have, we can possess honesty and equity, you know, and when I say equity, I'm talking about being fair, you know, impartiality, you know, and dealing with others. So you're, you're completely impartial when you're dealing with others. You don't have, you don't show favorites. You're, you're fair and balanced, you know, you have, uh, like I said, genuineness and honesty. So we have these two things going on within us, you know, at, at, at all times, you know, you know, so, um, You know, but we understand according to the scripture that, uh, you know, we certain people, you know, they possess that extra help. You know, certain people possess that extra help and the most high is dealing with certain people um, on a on a on a deep level. You know, the most high is dealing with certain people on a really, really deep level. Um, yeah. So, you know, but on the contrary, the most high is. Um, 
you know, he's not in some people's thoughts at all. You know, some people are not made upright. Some people are hardened. Some don't have uh, the knowledge of the most high, like the scripture says. Some people ha don't have not the knowledge of the most high. You know, some people, um, you know, he's not in some people's thoughts. Some people are not made up right. And some people are hardened. Like I said, they don't have the knowledge of the most high. But like I said, some people have the ex some people do have extra help. You know, like the scripture points out in Luke 47, it talks about how uh, certain people are furnished with talents, you know, which makes it uh, that much easier to um, to choose the right path that is set before us, that straight path, because they're furnished with talents already, which is just how the, the Heavenly Father has made it. You know, you go to Luke, it's just, just so I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not making it up. This is Luke 47. Oh, it's, it's lucky. Luke 40. Um, it's like I said 47. Luke 12. It's a lot for that. This is Luke 12. Uh, Luke 12 and 47. My bad. Luke 12 and 47. It says, And that servant which knew the Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So there's people that know the will of the Heavenly Father. Why? Because they've been furnished with talents. You know, they have they have a uh, they they have knowledge of the Most High. They are they were made upright. He was in their thoughts. You know, verse forty eight. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more so <clears throat> so some people have been given much they've been furnished with talents they've been furnished with extra help and ability so they have that extra help you know so that that's to say that <laughs> i like to use this word you know um i know it can seem like jake being kind of funny when he uses this word but i, I like it you know, um, it's, it says it's uh, the complexion, the complexion of, uh, of your heart. I like to call it the complexion of your heart. And what do I mean when I say the complexion of your heart? Because, you know, you go into the heart and the scriptures, it really means your mind. So when I say the complexion of your heart, um, I'm talking about, you know, your temperament, you know, your, your overall temperament, your, your your natural disposition of your mind, your character your makeup, you know, the way uh, that you think, your perspective, how you interpret, uh, how you interpret things. <clears throat> certain people have been given a leg up. Certain people have been given uh, extra, uh, you know, an extra ability. You know what I mean? So when you go to Romans uh, 7, when you go into Romans 7 and verse 16, it says, if then I do that, which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. So certain people, when they do the wrong thing, they, they can feel it. They know this is not right, man. I ain't the conscience is, is killing them. They're like, yeah, this ain't right. Certain people, they're just not weighed down by their conscience. Like they can just do a thing and then they're not in trouble. They're not in trouble. Like other men, not, they don't feel bad about it. They feel no more growth, no remorse, you know, and those, those people, you know, um, because like, you know, some people, you know, the most high is made that way, <clears throat> you know, so I'm saying I brought out Romans 7 and 16 to show that certain people, they struggle with um, um, with bad things. So they struggle with certain things. And, and this signifies um, this signifies goodness. It shows you love um, the commandment it shows you love your because you you don't like to do the wrong thing. You know, we were made. Um, differently You know he's made our ways diverse Like the scripture says You know certain people are vessels um, Of honor and are made uh, And are made thus You know the scripture says why has he made me thus So certain people Are vessels of honor And he says why have you made me thus You know what I'm saying So um, um, 
Khan. So let me grab this. Uh, let me grab this. Um, so so certain people there they are vessels of honor and are made thus. So if you go to Job, you go to Job. This is Job. This is Job one in verse eight. It says, and the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the most high and eschewth evil. So, you know, we see here that, you know, certain people are just made differently, man. He was, he's more, he was a morally upright man. He feared the most high and eschewed evil, <clears throat> you know. You know, we know when we know through reading the scriptures that Job was, you know, he, he was kind of uh, shut in. He was fenced, in, fenced, um, fenced in and protected. And, you know, he was restraint. He had he had restraint. He was morally innocent because the most high had um, purpose that he was going to make Job that way. You know, um, and when you go here to wisdom. This is wisdom eight. In 19, it says, uh, for I was a witty child and had a good spirit. Certain people are just made that way for I was a witty child and had a good spirit. Yeah, rather being good, I came into a body undefiled. So certain people are just um, considered um, morally upright. You know what I'm saying? And they go into bodies like that. You know, this is Psalms. Um, so I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this like. You know, I'm, t I'm just discussing the extra help right now that some people have, you know, um, and then I'm going to make my other points. But just stay with me for a second. This is Psalms 139, <clears throat> 139 and 14 it says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. So when you go into um, wonderfully made, it basically says that he was made. Um, if you go into that, I, you know, I got the airplane mode on, but in your own time, it's the blue letter uh, Bible. When you go into that, that word of wonderfully made, he's talking about how he was holy. You know, he was made holy and set apart, you know, different than others, you know, you know. And so we, we get that extra help, man. You know, those of us, Lord willing, that we're, we're made uh, for um we're made for um, clean purposes. It says the scriptures is, uh, you know, the scriptures is also extra help, man, as well. It helps to um, it helps us to rightly divide. It helps us to proceed on straight paths. It helps us to do the right thing. It helps us to dissect and expound and correctly divine a message, you know, you know. So every now and then the most high, he does something what we call the step back, you know, you know, in, in basketball, they got that thing called the step back. So what, it, what the most high does is he does the step back, you know, which is um, <clears throat> see, you know, he wants to see if we'll maintain our integrity, even when uh, he steps back. If we still choose life, you know, and we see that uh, in the book of uh, Job. We see that in the book of Job. We see that. uh we see that in the book of we see that in the book of Job. You know the brother uh brother Yitzhakai just uh, just joined me. Uh Shalom. I'm good, brother. Yeah, so we see that um every now and then the most high does something we call the uh the step back and he wants to see if we're gonna maintain integrity, you know, even when uh the most high steps back, if we still uh choose life. And yeah, brother, this uh this topic I was going into was called I have set before the a straight path. Mm. And um, so if you go to Job, um, Job 2 and 9, it says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still re uh, retain thine integrity? It says, Curse the Most High and die. And we see if we, if we uh, head over to Job 13, um, 13 and 15, kind yeah, if we if we go to Job 13 and 15, it says it says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Yeah, so the reason he did that is because the complexion of his heart, the complexion of his 
mind um it didn't it didn't match the overall complexion of his mind you know his the way he was made like we said in psalms 139 and 14 that he was that uh <clears throat> he's fearfully and wonderfully made you know certain men are fearfully and wonder, wonderfully made when you go into that wonderfully made once again that's dealing with being uh set apart you know they have uh the ability they they have uh, they're morally innocent you know their 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 thinking and their perspective is different and the way they interpret things is different you know they've been given that extra help from on high so he says uh though he slay me yet will i trust in him but i will maintain my own ways before him and um um Um, this is uh, Deuteronomy. <clears throat> it's Deuteronomy eight and sixteen. It says, uh, "It says, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to to do thee good at thy latter end." So he was trying to humble them and prove them, which means he was, means he was trying to to test them. That was that that was that test to see if they would maintain integrity. You know, so he said he fed him in the wilderness with manna. Um, and it says that he might humble him and that he might prove him. So he was trying to test them to see if they would maintain their weight with yet again. I got one. Oh, you got it, bro. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Just uh, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. It says, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. God, so, you know, he he's a... Uh, He's refining. Uh, he refines you, and he and he is. He chooses you in the furnace of affliction because the reason he does that is because he understands what, um, you know, what you're capable of. You know, the Most High. He 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 knows your inward parts. He knows what you're capable of, which means that when he does do the step back, you know, he knows what you're capable of. He knows that you're. Um, you know, he's instilled certain things within you. You know, he's furnished you with talents. You know, he's made you different. He's made your ways diverse. Mm -hmm. You know, he's made you a vessel of honor. Um, so vessels of honor are supposed to behave a certain way, you know, and that's why they're there. Um, you know, th that's why that furnace of, of affliction is, is there, you know, it's there to prove you and to make you even better. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that was it, right? Yep. Con, this is Deuteronomy uh, 13 and verse 3. It says, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that of that. Pro no, let me go up to verse one. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the most high. Your power proveth you to know whether you love the Lord, your power with all your heart, with all your soul. So once again, the most high, he does that step back. You know, he let him. He 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 brings a, a prophet through that uh, to, to prove you. You know, to see if you're gonna follow the overall complexion of your heart. Because the Most High, you know, like I said before, that some people, he's not in some people's thoughts. You know, he's not at all in some people's thoughts. And some some people are not made up right. Some people are are, are um, some people are hardened. Some people don't have the knowledge. You know, of the most of the Most High. You know, so he's testing and he's putting certain people through his pay, through their paces. Um, this is Exodus 16 in verse 4 it says then said the Lord unto Moses behold I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law so the Most High wants to make sure you're going to walk in them laws you know so he'll introduce adversity he'll introduce certain things certain evils you know you know and during that step back you know we get no real spiritual help you know, we get no no real spiritual help other than the, than um, than than um, you know what we've been taught already to see if we're gonna act on it. You know, and and then like I said before, we got extra help because certain certain people are, you know, they they're um, they're made um, differently. Um, this is Second Chronicles. Um, if you got anything? Just let me know. Yeah. Second Chronicles uh, thirty two. Uh, I did have one reference. Oh, you did? Yeah, it's a lot here. Okay, um, Yeah, because if we go one more, it might be out of here. It's a lot. Okay, good. It's Daniel 12 and 10, my father. Are you good? Dan, Daniel 12 and 10? Mm-hmm. It's uh, 
Daniel chapter 12 and verse 10, it says, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's another instance. That's a beautiful precept. Right? So it says, the uh, Many shall be purified and made right, white. It says, The wicked shall do wickedly. Why will the wicked do wickedly? Because some people are vessels of dishonor. You know, they're not vessels of honor. They're vessels of dishonor. So when the Most High, he... Um, you know when he when he set before us the straight path, really he's setting for um, he's setting that straight path for the vessels of the vessels of mercy. That's that straight path that he set for the vessels of mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, the, um, but it says the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. You know, that's because um, you know they're not being received as a son. Mm -hmm. You know, um, kind of this is a uh, this is Second Chronicles thirty two. 27. Oh, then also, yeah, but my son, he declared the end from the beginning. Mm. That's another instance of a, a step back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's already going to happen how it's going to happen. So I'm going to just let it happen because it's already predestinated for, you yeah. know what I'm saying, whatever to happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's yeah. like just a quick side. Nah, that's right. That's true, too. I, that's true. It's like I, all I got to do is sit back. God. You know? You know, sit back and let it play <laughs> Let it play out. Yeah, yeah no. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this is Second Chronicles 32 and 27. It says, And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, and he made himself uh, treasures, treasuries for silver and for gold and for uh, precious stones and for spices and for shields, for all manner of pleasant jewels, and storehouses also for uh, the increase of corn and wine and oil and stalls, for all manner of beasts and coats for flocks. Moreover, it sound like uh, it's like you. <laughs> this sound like they got no. Uh... Uh, Luke the twelfth chapter was like, oh, I need, where am I gonna find to put all my possessions at? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Mind. Yeah, kind of. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, this is what it made me think of. It's a lot, right. brother. Now nah, you good? You good? Um, it says, uh, um, and moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance for the Most High, giving him substance very much. The same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course of Gihon. And brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David, and Hezekiah prospered in all his works. Howbeit, in the business of ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, the Most High left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. So the Most High wants to know all that's in your heart when he does the step back move on you. You know what I'm saying? He wants to know all that's in your heart. You only messing with me because I got you riches, or you messing <laughs> with me because you because uh, you're rich towards me. That's you know right. Yeah. Woo. Kind. Not kind. You know. So. Um, so yeah, man. You know the Most High. He does. Uh, and yeah, I'm getting ready to wrap it. I got one. Um, kind. I think it's around like six. It's like that. Yeah, six, uh, six. six and seven. Okay. Three eight two. Kind of, this is Sirach 6 <clears throat> and 7. It says, Be in peace, oh, Sirach 6 and 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. Mm. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Nah, nah. Yeah, so, you know, so the Most High, he wants to see if you're going to abide in the day of his trouble, which <laughs> means nah. when he brings. Like that, that furnace of affliction. Yeah, yeah. Because affliction is synonymous with trouble, Sirach here, brother. No, nah, you're right. You're right. And when I'm not like, when my, my hand. Cause like Job said, um, you know, we we uh, the Most High give it, and the Most Most High take it for weight. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. So, you know, when He's not being that giver to you, are you still gonna be down? Are <laughs> 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 you still gonna be down? Yeah, that's it, bro. You know, so when you abide in the day of trouble, like, and the answer is like a lot of people won't, but you know, that's why the Most High introduces adversities and evils, and He does the step back. But he also gives you extra help in advance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, oh, shit. Uh, Yahweh Shai, Matthew, the fourth chapter. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He let Satan just t uh, tempt him and try him in the mountains. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? He just stepped back. You know what I'm saying? But afterward, he had the angels come minister to Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He didn't just leave him in that state. You that's know what right. I'm saying? That's right. Nah, that's right. Uh, that's right. So he even did a step back on Yahweh Shai. Oh, it pleased him to bruise him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. See, but the beauty of that is that uh, Lord Yahweh Shai and and um, and other men that are on the right right hand side, mm -hmm. the Most High has made give, he's he's laid that straight path before him, and certain men are gonna choose bowels and mercies. Yep. They're gonna choose love. They're gonna choose peace, even when their set um, life and death is set before them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're gonna choose that right straight path because they're um, 
they're morally innocent people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, yeah, they, they was wonderfully made, like you made that point earlier. Mm -hmm. you know, many should be made white and yep. purified. Those are the ones that's gonna be made white and purified. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. to uphold that weight. Yep, yep. They uphold that weight. Yep. Kind of. Not. Um, this is Deuteronomy 8 and verse 2. It says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy power led thee uh, uh, these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee <laughs> to know what was in their heart, in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Mm. <laughs> um, in verse 16, if you jump down, it says, Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do good, mm. do thee good in their latter end. So, mm. you know, um, you know, during the step back, like I said before, we get no real, uh, no real um, spiritual help. You know what I mean? But we still have to, um, we still have to choose. Um, you know that 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 aspect that he put that he put in us, that breadcrumb that he laid in, in within us. You know, because in that in the story of Hansel and Gretel, they laid breadcrumbs so they could find their way home. Mm -hmm. The Most High has laid spiritual breadcrumbs mm -hmm. within us. Mm -hmm. You know that that good, that con that conscience, that purity of heart, that mm -hmm. moral goodness. You know that um that honorable honorableness the uh, genuineness that honesty that equity you know so we're not being um so we're being fair and, and impartiality in dealing with others so he put that good in us but also in the same note we've been exposed and had he's subject to creature to vanity so within us is both concupiscence too like i was saying before that strong desire for improper and illicit desire mm -hmm. no you got to select no, I'm gonna let you grab it. Yeah, no, you got, no, you but, um, within us is both um, good, like I said, that, that, that moral goodness, you know, that good conscience, that purity of heart, equity, a genuineness, the honesty, and within us is, is is that bad as well, which is which is a which is a path that's within us. You know, it's a path that's within us, but without we have to walk a certain life. So within us is is, is concupiscence, like I said, a strong desire for what is forbidden. You know, depravity, perverseness, transient morality. You know, being um, weak, being unprofitable, man. That transient morality mm -hmm. is when you you good one second, you're doing right. Mm -hmm. Next, and then the next minute, you're oh, going the hell off. Yeah, you changing. Yeah, you you you, you look warm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know exactly, exactly. But that's what the, even within the, uh, the the people that are vessels of mercy, like they have that uh, element about them sometimes. But the most high, you know, we fall. We, like we fall, you know well, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, we're stored, you know, we're stored their white back way to you. It's yep. like rerouting on the GPS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like this, you're not made to be this way. Good, uh, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. so um when he set set that straight path before us, we have to choose the good that's that's in us, those spiritual breadcrumbs that's good that's been laid within us. You you said you had something. Yeah, I got one. Mm -hmm. Um where you it's at, uh, Psalm ninety five and uh, fourteen. Psalms ninety five. I mean uh, fifteen, so like you. Yeah. Psalms 95 and 50. Yeah, the point is 50. You could really read a little bit more, but you can just be 15. Oh, you said 95 and 15? No, 94 and 15. Okay. Con. Um, Psalms 94 and 15, it says, But judgment shall return unto righteousness, mm. and all the upright in heart shall follow it. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. That's God. cold, I yeah. Con, so... <laughs> That's like perfect, spot on to what you it said. Really is. Yeah, that's the spirit, it really is. You could you could break it down. God, right? Yeah. So it says, but judgment shall return unto uh, righteousness. You know what I'm saying? So judgment has returned unto righteousness. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's what's going forth. Righteous judgment, man. And who's going to be bringing forth that righteous judgment? The righteous judges, man. You know what I'm saying? All the upright in heart. Those are the righteous judges, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're following after righteousness. They're following after proper judgment, which is one and the same. You know, they're following after justice. They're following after equity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's within them already. You know, that's yeah. what's instilled within them. The Alahayim, the judges. You that's know right, what I'm saying? I, that's right. And that's that, that That reminds me of the scripture where it says, uh, light consorteth until it's... Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're if you're already if it's it's only like a magnet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The scriptures is like a magnet to certain people. Mm -hmm. Or doing the right thing is like a magnet to certain people because mm -hmm. it's already in you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so it says, judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. So mm -hmm. all the upright in heart shall follow uh, righteousness, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're just returning to judgment. Yep. <clears throat> That's yep. beautiful. Right? Yep. True um, judgment too. Man. Which goes into discernment as well, and, and being circumspect, prudence, mm -hmm. you no know, wisdom, man. You know, yeah, kind of. Those things are entailed in judgment too, not just the hammer coming down. Yeah, you know? right, right, exactly, exactly. I, um, so just like to close it out, um, um, let's go to James one. Uh, this is James. 
Um, James 1. <clears throat> James 1 and uh, 12. Probably read to 14. It says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. <clears throat> For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Yes, so the Most High, he already has the crown of life laid up Ooh. for certain people, Ooh. you know, because they're going to go down that path Ooh. anyway. Yeah. You know, that's why I say, Blessed is the man who endureth to say Shalak. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> when he is tried, they just hit yeah. different. We just. For this whole topic God, not yeah. God. yeah so he's already got it already laid out anyway because yeah. of the whole complexion of your heart you've already been fearfully and wonderfully made you um you already Romans 7, 7 and 16 mm -hmm. um you know you already don't like this like um Romans 7 and 16 Paul was saying that he didn't like what was going on in his body right because he was struggling against it that struggle signifies goodness mm -hmm. you know just that struggle alone mm -hmm. signifies yeah, goodness. yeah it definitely does uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying trying you know, to overcome them infirmities yep. you know what I'm saying yep I don't like what's warring in my flesh I don't nah. like it I nah, know if, nah. even if I do do, do the wrong thing uh -huh. I don't like the way it makes me feel yeah, yeah kind of nah, that's yeah. a sign of that's that moral innocence mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. that moral innocence yeah to have something wrong plague you in your mind or plague you in your heart yeah that's a sign of, of uh, righteousness mm -hmm. man sign. virtue yep no. Yeah, like you don't you, you don't like wrong. You don't right. like it. It doesn't sit well with you. Uh, um, it also says, uh, it's like you just at a point, it said mm -hmm. he should receive the crown of life. Mm -hmm. And the crown of life, when you go into that word crown and blue letter, mm -hmm. um, it goes in one of the uh, definitions for it says of an exalted rank. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much the uh, those who are superior in class to others, like wonderfully made, mm -hmm. was set apart, you know, yeah. uh, distinction. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's that distinction, you know. That you're going to receive eternally by being propelled to a certain type of position, mm. you know, amongst uh, all beings, mm. you know. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So that's that crown of life, you know. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. That crown of life. So it says, when he's tried, he shall receive that crown of life that the brother was just talking about, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. It says, uh, verse 13, it says, let no man say when he is tempted, <clears throat> I am tempted of the most high. Yeah. So when a man is tempted, let him not say. <clears throat> that I am tempted of the most high like I was stating before within us because we're subject to vanity within us is, is concupiscence within us is depravity perverseness and transient morality and the, and the, and the possibility of being um, you know unprofitable at times so we're not it's not actually that the most high is is tempting you is that you you've got uh, wickedness within you mm. within your members mm. you know what I'm saying yeah. and you have righteousness within you Purge you know left for the therefore the living. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Um it says uh verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Mm. You know, so you're drawn away by your own lust and enticed, you know, and that's why I was saying, you know, you gotta choose the right path that is set before you mm -hmm. because um, you know, you have to choose life, you know, when you're tested. You know, you have to choose life, you know, um <clears throat> and not get drawn away or enticed. By the things, um, the bad things that that are that uh, that are that are also within us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I tell you in uh, Second Corinthians the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. I've been bringing it out a lot lately. For the love of my shot constrain of us. Mm -hmm. When you go into that word constrain mm -hmm. on uh, Google, it goes into limit or restrict. You know what nice. I'm saying? So it, it, the, our love that we have for Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, Lord willing, if we truly have it, it's going to restrict us and give us limitations on certain stuff that we wouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? It's and it's that way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, I am the way. Yep. You know? Like, no, nah, no, nah, you good. And just like that scripture you went into when you said uh, the upright in heart shall follow it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they're, they're going to follow the right way because, um, you know, it talks about, um, it's a lot. It talks about how wisdom, um, um, Dang. Wisdom shall not dwell in a malicious soul. It shall not dwell in a malicious soul. Yeah, a yeah. If you're not being malicious, yeah, that was, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I yeah. Feel like it was another one. You yeah, it wasn't. It was another it's one, but it's all good. Yeah, that, that works too, though. Nah. So you know, wisdom is not going to dwell in a malicious soul. You know what I'm saying? It won't. It won't dwell in a malicious soul. And, and if you're upright at heart, you know you're going to follow the right things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know the path that's set before you. Yeah. You know you're not going to like it says here in James one and fourteen. You know you're not going to be drawn away. By your lusts mm, and enticed yep. off the path. Yep. Um, so um, Matthew four and three. Mm -hmm. It says, "Oh, that's why I quoted Matthew four earlier by oh, Yahweh Shai. You know, what um, I'm saying getting tempted by Satan. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How much my shot did a step back? Yep, you know, yep. That's 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 the spirit. Con, yep, yep, yep. Con, Matthew four and three. And when the tempter came to him, he mm. said. If thou be the son of the Most High, <laughs> command these stones be made bread. Yeah. Mm. So he was being enticed mm -hmm. 
you know, he was being enticed, but the the Holy Spirit of discipline, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that that was oh, saying flee restraint. Oh, from the sea, yep. Yeah, that restraint. That's the that's the one I was looking yeah, for. Kind of. the, the, the oh, that's the first down. Oh, that's was the, it? Yeah, that's the first down. Oh, that's wild, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's spirit. the first down from there. Yeah, good. Yeah, God, I call all y'all my shit. Call all y'all my shit. Yeah, so that, that's that discipline. We won't we won't go away from the path because of discipline. Mm. You know, and that's that spirit uh -huh. that's within us as well. We also have possess discipline. We also right. uh, possess other uh, attributes that mm -hmm. over that overpower, you know, the carnality mm -hmm. that might lie within us. Yep. <clears throat> Sexuality. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. First Thessalonians, um You read um ten on that too, uh Bubba Sir? Um Con. On that um in that Matthew four? Con. This is Matthew four and uh, verse uh, ten. Uh Selakia. No, eleven, Selakia. Matthew, Matthew 4 and 11, mm -hmm. it says, Then the de that the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels come and minister unto him. Yeah, kind. <laughs> hey, that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. And they minister on him. That's that extra help I was going yeah, into. Kind, bro. We got that extra help. See, we're furnished mm -hmm. not only with talents, but we have spiritual um, guides and spiritual help mm -hmm. that comes and ministers unto us. So, mm -hmm. And that's that extra help to make, it sh make sure that what we do matches the overall complexion mm -hmm. of our mind. Yes, and I went, I went into the overall complexion of our mind. I talked about our temperament. Our natural disposition of our mind, our character, our makeup. So if it doesn't really fit our temperament, our natural makeup, that the Most High, because He said, it says that I, me being good, like I like I was going into Wisdom eight and nineteen and twenty, me being good, I return to a good. Matter of fact, I put it mm. again. Ooh. Man, I just thought of so much stuff at once, I couldn't <laughs> even catch it all. <laughs> I couldn't even catch it all. See, huh? I'm sorry, bro. I had some okay. fire to add to that. It was just okay. too much. It was like a whirlwind. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's lucky, bro. No, you good, brother. But it, like I said, in wisdom eight and um, in wisdom eight and nineteen, it says, "For I was a witty child and had a good spirit. Yea, rather being good, I came into a body undefiled." Mm. <clears throat> so, like I said, if it doesn't match the overall complexion of your mind, because the Most High has given us extra help, mm -hmm. if certain things your your actions don't match the overall complexion of your mind, because He made you, uh, you made He made you, um, you know, a person that's morally upright, and you in, you entered into a body undefiled. And, um, you know, so every your moves have to match that, you know, uh, certain ways of thinking. Your perspective has to has to uh, line up with certain things. You know, you have the way you interpret things has to be right. Mm -hmm. Um, um, our first Thessalonians three and five, unless you ask something. Yeah, I got a quick one. Okay. It's, uh, it's rock 37 and 27. Man, I had some more pre sales. Right? So, like, yeah, this is the only one that came back. Right? 37 Jeez, so like, man. I should have gave you a little pinch key. <laughs> it's a lot. That's no, all good, bro. It's so, so 37. And 27. Um, so, right, 37, 27. Come huh? Uh, my son, prove thy soul uh, in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you Ooh. know what I'm saying? So, you got to prove yourself. Mm. <laughs> That's a part of it. Like, hold on. Like, Am I oh, examine thyself if you be in the faith or not? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You got to prove your own self. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, am I really a man with a certain type of temperate, temperament that mm. Yahweh Shai would be looking for? Am I the one? Am I one of the ones that Yahweh Shai is going to find faith with mm -hmm. when he comes back to the earth? You know what I'm and saying? And if I am, I should be choosing the path of life. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Good, I look. should be choosing that straight yep. path. God, brother. Yep, so like uh, No, you good? No, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it for God. Yeah. Um, um, can we grab uh, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 5 real quick? I got you. Mm -hmm. So I get this uh, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5. Um, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 5. Oh, 3 and 5. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. It says, For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Yep, you know? yep. It says, I sent to know your faith. Lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. Yeah, yep. So um I sent you to I sent to know your faith, lest by any means the tempter tempt you. Yeah, so you know, the tempter comes and he he sends that test our way. Yep. You know, he sends that test that test our way to see whether or not we're gonna um we're gonna veer. We're gonna veer off, man. Yep. We're gonna choose we're are we gonna choose another path. Okay. You know. You know, but the beautiful thing about temptation is that the Most High uses it if for those for those souls that's fit to uh, that's that's uh, he already designated to receive the kingdom and they are going to follow the straight path. Mm -hmm. He's tempting them um, with aims of spiritual good. Mm -hmm. You know, he's tempting them 
um, he's he's doing tests that aim at spiritual good. Mm. You know, instead of you know when when you know that's the only reason he's you know he's doing that to those, to those men, he's doing that because it's, it's focused on spiritual good. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, so we know that Satan, what Satan wants to do is he wants to appeal to the bad in us. You know, he wants to appeal to our bad, the, you know, the taste, our sight, our sinful egoism. You know, basically to bring about apostasy. Mm -hmm. They're going to uh, mark. Uh Mark the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, it's kind of wild because it's kind of <laughs> tie in to the lesson I just did. Really? Yeah, infirmities and ailments. Because uh -huh. um, I was making a point in the lesson when you, it's it's a infirmity of the flesh, mm -hmm. and then is there a infirmity that you're faced with when you uh, come to serve Yahweh Shah? Mm -hmm. Because um, infirmity goes into affliction, goes into discomfort, goes into disease. You know what I'm saying? So um, Satan. Um, like it says in Mark the fourth chapter, mm -hmm. um, the deceit, uh, they choked the word because they didn't have no root in themselves. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They weren't root in, rooted in Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They weren't ready to take on the infirmity that comes with being in the body of Yahweh Shah. So mm -hmm. Satan, he uses that to his advantage to get them up out of there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, because he can use the infirmity of the flesh to ultimately uh, sift you out of the infirmities of the spirit. You know, wow. or. He could use both of them, yeah, you know what I'm saying, nice. in a better sense, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck you well. Uh -huh. So you got infirmities of, of being within the body of a mashiach yeah. and infirmities with in being in body. the flesh. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's deep. And Satan plays off of that, you know what I'm saying? He, and you end up choking the word because you didn't have no root in yourself, not understanding being in the body of your house. That's what comes with it. That's what comes you with know? it. <laughs> yeah, because you think that you're gonna come in this thing and then not experience tests. Come, bro. You know, but that's that. The reason is because the like we, you know, he's trying to yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness, mm -hmm. and in order to do that, he has to take you down different paths, and so that's why I said the tests that they aim at spiritual good. Mm -hmm. That's that spiritual good. But uh -huh. Satan, of course, he plays his role. But really, in a deeper level, brothers, it can go over certain brothers' heads. Satan is actually helping to to uh, prune you. I got a free stuff for that. I got a free stuff for that. <laughs> He's actually pruning your goofy self. You know? First Corinthians 5, 5. That's, it's First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. It says, To deliver such and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Yeah, how was that? Mm, my know? goodness. Yeah, kind So, you know, that sometimes, you know, the, the tearing down of the flesh you know, it says the scripture says, though my um, outward man, man perish, mm -hmm. my inward man is being renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. So Satan, you know, this destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the mm -hmm. day of the Lord. You, God, shy, you know, God, bro, because the uh, like you're saying, Hebrews 7 and 28 for the law make of men of infirmity, high priests. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But uh, uh, the oath that comes from uh, the law, you know, gives us the son who's consecrated forevermore. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So through through your house shot, my shot, we can be consecrated forevermore and conquer over the flesh. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We can conquer that through your house shot, my shot, but we have to truly be in that body. Mm. And to truly be in the body, you have to completely put off the flesh. Mm. Like it says in Romans 13 and 14, make no provisions for the flesh mm. and put on your house shot, my shot. You know, that's how you put up, beat the flesh. Mm. So like, yeah. yeah, yeah, make no provisions for the flesh. That that makes it so that you can that you you stay on that path, right? nah, bro. You know, you make nah. no provisions for for the for the flesh. Nah, brother. You know, it's a lot to cut you off. No, 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 no. That's it. Nah, you know? Um. So yeah, he wants to get us to, uh, to get caught up in our in our tastes, our sight, our mm -hmm. sinful egoism. You know? Which is ultimately um, mm -hmm. uh, infirmity again, Salakia. Mm. Because when you go into that Greek word infirmity, mm. one of the definitions for it is to restrain from corrupt desires. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So ultimately, you know, that's what Satan plays off. He uses those infirmities, you know, yeah. those diseases, those discomforts to like completely to, to get you out of there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because the scripture says, you know that you're not, you, you're not, that you don't know that you're sick in the book of Revelation. Oh, yeah, kind of. That's how you know that you're yeah, sick. Yeah, kind Because you have, you, you have egoism. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you going off of your tastes and your sight. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes you sick. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and I had a few more. Oh, yeah, that's that, uh, Sarah 18 and 30. Um, go not after thine appetite and refrain thyself from thy lust. Mm -hmm. you know, make you a laughing stock before your enemies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Kind of not. You good? Yeah. So, so temptation. I think I might skip a couple. <laughs> kind. Do you think? Thing. Um. Let me see what it's talking about. Is that uh, Genesis three and um, 
Genesis 3 and uh, yeah, I guess I can go here. This is Genesis 3 and 6. It says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, uh, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, so like I was saying, you know, that testing, it aims at um, spiritual good. So um, what, what happened was this, the woman, she had everything. She was equipped with everything to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But... um she had um um that sinful egoism yeah you know what i mean um man i want to go to this too this is first john and the reason i'm going into this into this is I'm, I'm still talking about um the temptation aspect you know what i mean um because we talked about the extra help we talked about the step back and now we're talking about the temptation aspect of uh the straight path you know that is let that is set before us you know we said we went into Deuteronomy 30 and 19, how he set before us life and death. You know what I mean? And that that's life that's that life and death that's set before us is within our own members. You know what I mean? That life. <laughs> Bro, it's wild. Romans Roman 6 and 19, for if we as as we have yielded our members servants unto uh uh uncleanness, now let us yield our members unto righteousness and holiness. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's that life. That's that life. You know? So you you're actually uh walking the path. You know, um, according to the, the decisions you make, you know, according to the spirit you decide to be in, you know, according to um, um, overcoming the flesh. Judgment should return unto the right, unto, unto righteousness. <laughs> yep. You know, yep. the upright of heart shall follow it. Yep. You know. Yep. Con, so temptation is improving, approving, and reproving. You know, and that's what the Most High is trying to do. You know, he's trying to approve, improve, mm. and reprove. Mm. You know, so when you go into Job... Um, when you go into Job 23 and 10 <laughs> 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 Job 23 and 10 says but he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me I shall come forth as gold so <clears throat> the most high he knows the way that he take and that goes that goes uh, that goes right back into um, the extra help you know he knows the way we take you know he um, he's He's furnished us with certain abilities, so he knows the way we take. But it was 23 and 10. Job 23 and 10. He says he knoweth the, he knoweth the, uh, the, way, the, way, that I take. the way that I take. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that way that, that you take is that path, man. You know, that's that path that, you know, I've set before thee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a straight path. So mm -hmm. he, he knows the way that we take. Because, oh, dang. And it's wild. Because mm -hmm. in, uh, in verse 12. We always go to this one. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the, esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's the same thing Yahweh Shah said to Satan in Matthew, the fourth chapter. Yeah. He said, man should not live by every uh, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded by the mouth of the most high. Mm. So they show you that all the righteous and upright in heart, they follow the same way. Yep. Because they yep. said the same thing. He said, my foot have not have held his steps his way have I kept and not declined. Yeah. I'm not finna go away. I'm not finna step outside of the way because I am. Like I'm walking in the way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, the breadcrumbs are in within me. Yeah. You've yeah, left the breadcrumbs yeah, right, within me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, I just gotta follow the drill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, nah. Um, first Peter one and seven. Yeah, more than that. Ooh, in verse 13, but Close he is up. one mind and who can turn him and what his soul deserve, even that he doeth. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, say that one more time. Yeah, it says <laughs> verse 13, but he is in one mind and who can turn him and what his soul deserve, even that he doeth. Yep. So he's of one mind. You know what I'm saying? His spirit is upright yeah, in him. Gone, uh, Certain people that don't have an upright spirit, like right. I said. I, gone, uh, so he, he said what his spirit desires, mm -hmm. he will do. Gone, uh, because you're being directed. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's Yahweh Shemesh has of one mind. He, 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 oh, it said you who has been his counselor. Yep. Yahweh Shemesh ain't counseling with nobody else, man. You know, yep. he already he got, he got enough in his mind. He don't need extra. I don't need your mind with my mind. Right. You know, I've I've, I've, I've set the bounds of the sand by a perpetual decree, man. You mm -hmm. know, where the oceans can't pass. What the hell I need your mind? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's a beautiful Dang. Yeah, and in 14, it says, For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. See, bro, that goes right into what I was just talking about, bro. Wow. The extra help. Wow, kind of. <clears throat> the extra help, the complexion of your heart. Mm. That goes into uh, 
and to certain people are vessels of honor, man. You know, he's in Job 1 and 8, he shut them in, he fenced them in. Spiritually fenced them in. Mm, yeah, he did. I, <laughs> you know I, I, yeah, like you're. This is what you're going. To, you're going to have to prove your integrity. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? This is like you're going to have to show what I instilled in you already. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to come out now. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's like it's time for you to do. It's time to do your thing. Like when yep. how was I turned 12 and 13? It was a time to uh, take that hiatus and get ready to <laughs> to get yeah get ready because <laughs> yeah. most high going to do the step back on him. Kinda. You know what I'm saying? He was giving him the extra help. Kinda. He did the step back on mm. him. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Gave him an extra uh, good amount of time to prepare himself yep. for temptation. It, it's you know the, all saying? the steps. Huh? Nah, nah. Give him the extra help. Mm. Then do the hit you with the step back, and then the temptation come. Damn, that's wild. <clears throat> and then even uh, 15, I feel like the air woman before it says, "Therefore, I am I trouble at his presence when I consider I am afraid of him." You know what I'm saying? It says, "For Yahweh my shall make of my heart soft, and the Almighty trouble of me." You know what I'm Ooh. saying? So. uh Basically, uh, that proves like uh, how about she my size in complete control. And then he said he, he got fearful. That's the point I wanted to make. I'm glad it came back. Mm. He said he got fear, he got fearful. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because he know that how about she my has things appointed from him. And they tell you in Psalms the 35th chapter that Yahab, I mean 34th chapter that how about she my um is is nigh unto them uh, who hope in his mercy and that fear him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So those that fear him, that's the ones he's going to be nigh unto to make sure they don't go off track. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And he got fearful when he realized <laughs> that Yahweh yeah, Shah had things appointed for him yeah. already. Yep. You know? Yep. That's like already having a way ready for him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then I thought about it earlier, too. Like, <laughs> it's the one of the points I was going to say. You know, in Mario Kart, when you might 